Hi, this is Gina. Welcome to Patra's Place. I'm going to talk about my swatch book that I bought uh, a few months ago from Amazon after seeing it on um, several other colorist tube, <laughs> YouTubes. Gee, I haven't done these videos for a while now, I'm out of practice. Anyway, I just want to walk you through this because I've had an enormous amount of pleasure doing this swatch book. And the reason why, or the main reason why, I swatch all my pencils is because if I'm doing colouring in something and I'm using one brand of pencil and I haven't got the colour I want, instead of uh, ruffling through all my other pencils, the boxes and the tins and so on, I can go straight to my swatch book and look for the colour I want, then I can go straight to the source and find it. So to me it's enormously time saving. Anyway, this is the one I settle for out of all the different ones that are on the internet, the Mega Colour Swatch Book. And that's my index. I've started off with the Prismacolor. I've got 72 Prismacolors, so I've tried to do them in uh, the colour order that suits me. The swatches aren't always in the same colour order, but it depends on the mood I'm in at the time and what the colours are looking like as I pull them out of the tin. So there's my Prismacolors. Then I have the Faber-Castell Polychromis. I've got 36 of those. Uh, Black Widow, I've got the full set of the Black Widows, except the, the skin colour tones, I haven't bothered about those sets. But this is the Monarch, a set of 48. Uh, this is the Black Widow, Black Widow, the set of 24. And the Black Widow Dragon, 36. Black Widow Cobra, 24. And the Black Widow Scorpion, 24. Then I've got Caran d'Ache Luminance 6901. I only got 20 of those and you know they're supposed to be the best in the world because they're the most expensive colour pencils in the world and so on and so forth. Look they're nice but I'm not overly impressed with them. Sorry, I, I, that nearly $100 I paid for these and I thought <laughs> if I'd known what I know now I wouldn't have paid $100 for them. There's other sets that I've got, 20 and 24 sets that are just as good if not better. Well they're probably not better and I guess these are aimed at artists who uh, draw you know, and, and um, do graphic art for a living and they're different purpose, they're not necessarily for color, designed for colouring in. Anyway they are what they are and um, they're okay. Derwent Artists, the Derwent Artists 72 set. Now I bought these about 20 years ago. When I was a kid at school, Derwents were the in thing when I, in the 1950s. Not many people could afford Derwent pencils. They were terribly expensive. And I think I had a set of 12 and I thought it was Christmas. And I always thought, when I grow up and start earning money, I'm going to buy a set of 72. And it wasn't until I was 60 years old that I did. But I was so tickled pink even at that age to get the 72, set of 72. So there they are. Then somebody gave me a set of 36 a couple of years ago, thinks she was doing the right thing. Oh, Gina likes colour pencils, I'll buy her a set of Derwent's. <laughs> now these are Derwent's Studio and there's a subtle difference. They're basically the same colour, but there's a subtle difference between the colours. I can't really quite put my finger on it, but anyway, I'm glad I've got them. And these are the Derwent Ink Tents, the 36 set, which again are completely different colouring pencils, as most of you would know. Love those. Derwent Academy, set of 24. Now, these were given to me by somebody who didn't like them. And I've got to admit, I, don't, I can understand why. They're nothing much, how can I say it, nothing much like the other Derwents. Um, they're very subtle, very pale, uh, almost into a, a pastel set, I suppose you could say. But maybe they've got a specific purpose they were designed for. I don't know, but I use them occasionally, but I'm not really wrapped in them. Then I've got the Faber-Castell. Oh, Faber these aren't the polychromists. These are assorted pencils that I've bought over time. These classic colour pencils, 10 of them. Classic colour pastel, yeah. Um, I saw them in the supermarket and I thought, oh, I've seen all the fuss about pastel coloured pencils in colourists on YouTube. And I thought, oh, well, I'll have some of those. And they're okay. These art group are ones that I've, I don't know. I've picked them up from somewhere. And this is an Albrecht Dura, a one-off pencil that I bought for an art course that I did um, a workshop in and they particularly wanted that colour. Now <clears throat> these ones, the Art Studio, set of 46, um, art, Riot Art and Craft is a, a chain store chain store of um, craft and art and craft here in Australia, I don't know if they have them overseas, but the Art Studio is their brand name. So they've got um, the normal colour range and then you've got four neon colours as well. 
Chameleon, which is Swiss pencils, which I absolutely love. 25 pencils, 50 shades, because they uh, one shade, a different shade at each end of the pencil. A lot of people knock them up. Um, they don't like them for whatever reason, but the pencils themselves are quite quite beautiful to use, and, and I do love the colours. Faber-Castell watercolour pencils, a set of 36. Now, here I was really lucky. I found those at um, an op shop for five bucks. <laughs> wow, I hardly even used. So that was that was a bonus. Bic Intensity. Now, I always thought Bic made just made borrowers, but all of a sudden in the supermarket I found this set of 24 pencils and I went for them. Wow, they're beautiful. They're absolutely brilliant, beautiful colours. Spectrum Noir, which again were given to me. Um, yeah, just that set. One page, I mean. Uh, yeah, the colours are nice and they're not bad to use, but oh gee, they break. Oh, when you sharpen them, they break and they break and they break. Some of them, um, I think it was a set of oh, 46 or whatever, I forget now, but some of them just kept on breaking until I just there was nothing left and I had to throw them away, which I was disappointed about. And I thought of contacting the company and thought, oh look, what the heck, I've got enough pencils, I don't need to worry about it. Mark Art, um, these are a set of 120. I never ever thought I'd buy it one of these budget sets of pencils for 120 pencils. Who needs 120? But I have to admit, they are enormous fun. There's not many colours there that, <laughs> that don't exist under the sun, is there? They're just cool. And they're nice to use. I really quite use them for a so-called budget, budget Chinese set. They're lovely. And I've got scholar pencils now. I only bought these last week. I wasn't going to buy any more colour pencils this year, was I? But when I saw these at Aldi for $1.29 for a set of 20, I thought, yes! <laughs> and I only bought them because somebody else I know had bought them. And she said they're, they're really nice pencils to use. And I agree, they are. Okay, that's a lot of the pencils. Now, I do have um, Sharpies and um, pastels and all sorts of um, you know, felt tip pens and so on. But I don't want to put them here because I think those pens run out faster than your normal pen. Your normal pencils will last for years unless they break or you, you sharpen them buggery. <laughs> but um, the other um, liquid, so liquid pencils, uh, pen, felt, felt tip pens and so on, I think you, know, they, you could run out of ink fairly quickly and those of you used them a lot. So I thought it's not worth putting them in a book on a permanent basis because, you know, they might in a month, in a month or six months' time, you know, there'd be nothing left of them, so, you know, you've got pages here um, with no purpose. Okay, in this section here, you've got blended colour combinations. Now, what I did here, I've got a colour wool, which I'll get. And I wanted to try things out. Oops. So, my colour wheel this one, which I paid 20 bucks for, which is okay. It talks about, um, okay, complementary colours, split complementary, triad, tetrad, and tetradic, I think it is, yeah. And I'd never heard of any of these, but the idea is that um, to have, find a complementary, comp colours that are complementary to each other, you have an arrow pointing that way, and the other arrow pointing over there. And those two are complementary. And when you turn it around, um, you know, you, those colours, yellow and violet are complementary. Yellow, green and red violet are complementary. So, sorry about the shine, that's, that's a lot. Yeah. Anyway, so what I did here with my pencils, I copied that all the complementary colours down like that. Then the triadic, which are the three colours that are complementary to each other. Then I did... Tetradic, which is four colours that are complementary to each other. And I used, let me see, for this one, I used Big Intensity for these first ones. But what I like to do eventually is use some of the other colour brands and just get different variations because they've, they've got different shades of those particular colours. And split complementary is where you've got a dominant colour and two complementary colours. And the reason I do this is because sometimes, especially if you're doing... Um, mandalas or something and you've got a limited palette I, I, sometimes I'm not quite sure I've got a fairly good idea of my colours but um, sometimes mine just goes a blank and I think what, am I, can, what colour will I use <laughs> so I thought if I do this I can't go wrong with um, you know choosing choosing colours that are, are going to match 
well, I mean, you can go wrong, I know, but anyway, that's a start. Now, this one is burnishing, an exercise in burnishing. I use three pencils, Caran d'Ache, Polychromis, and Prismacolor, all in red. Then I used a Torchon uh, on one side and a colourless blender, Prismacolorless blender pencil on the other side. That I used white, and that I used just a yellow coloured pencil. And it just gives me an idea of what effects I can get in burnishing when I'm burnishing um, yeah, areas of a, color, a picture that I've just coloured in. Plenty of room to play over there because I've got other things I'd like to do with different brands of pencils. Okay, then we've got these blended colour combinations. Now, Miss Martley on YouTube, Miss Martley, Marta in Switzerland, Switzerland, yeah. Um, she does some great tutorials on how to colour things like metals. In this case, gold, tin, steel, copper, bronze, silver, and so on. And she uses different colours to create. Instead of using just a gold coloured pencil, she creates gold by mixing these, these different colours. But now what I've done there isn't very good, but I know, I know what I've done. Miss Martley actually had like a bucket for each, each, um, excess, each colour and she coloured it in so it, it, it almost was a three-dimensional bucket using the colours to, to create the idea of being metal. And it was absolutely fantastic. So I've done my own version there. And while it won't look, doesn't look amazing, I know, but I know what to do next time I'm doing um, something and I just don't want, to, I don't want to use just a plain old gold or silver pencil, which don't usually look gold and silver when you put them on paper anyway. Um, this is uh, Polychromous Story. Okay, I think this was Miss Martley again. Various combinations. I've only done one. I've had to, had to do a strawberry. What the colours you can use. I just used to think, you know, strawberries are just red with a green bit. No, you can shade them and make them look quite quite attractive. Okay, so then over here. Um, this idea came from Colouring Bliss. Jennifer and Steve over at Colouring Bliss. They had... They used, only used Prismacolors. Well, I didn't have all the colours that they had. I think they've used, what, 150, isn't there, in the full set of Prismacolors? <clears throat> because I've only got the 72, I had to use a mixed polychromous, um, uh, Black Widow, Mark Art and all that. It's just not like getting to get three colours of light, medium and dark of a shade and um, just showing how you can blend them and what they look like. Fun exercise. I love playing with colour, not just colouring in, but actually playing with colour and getting different effects. Now, next one, leaves. I just love, leaves to me are just green or brown. Not so. Miss Martley again in Switzerland says, no, no, you can, you can colour leaves quite beautifully. Mostly Prismacolor, but again, some of you use Polychromis. Actually, Miss Martley uses Prismacolor and Polychromis and gives, uh, when she's doing the tutorial, she gives both numbers of both ones so that if you haven't got one you just go to the other brand but I just, just love those I think they just look super not as good as hers but good <laughs> and there we are some more oops get so you see the light yeah anyway good enough uh, and one more yeah generic leaf okay so now Miss Bartley's actually just put another tutorial only a probably a day or two ago of leaves with different colours again so eventually I'll be uh, sitting down and doing that because you know, I come to drawing painting leaf, uh, colouring in leaves in especially in Johanna Basford's books and some others like that with a lot of leaves and floral stuff I'm just my mind just goes a blank and now I'll have something to refer to okay this one maple leaves how to blend colours for maple leaves which you know particularly beautiful um, that one's using polychromis, that's using Prismacolor, and this one I just mucked around using some, some marker pens, but again, using I'll use different um, media to create different effects for those over a period of time. You know, okay, oak leaf, well, I've only found one oak leaf so far, but I could use that for other things, so I'm not, not terribly worried about having all those. Toadstools and mushrooms, yeah, well, again, Joanna Basford and other art. Uh, colouring book artists have lots of toadstools and mushrooms and fairy type stuff and you don't just colour them brown you can colour them all sorts of colours so I'll be colouring the rest more mushrooms with, with multi colours just for different effects good fun but it's so it's so good having the key 
beside each mushroom to see the colour you've used, you know. It's, um, you don't have to think about it, you just go straight to the colour that you want. Okay, roses. Uh, let me see, I've got one done in the top one's polychromous, the second one is prismacolor. The prismacolor I chose my own tints because I didn't have a guide. The polychromous, the top one was in a book or a tutorial I should say. A tutorial or a book? I can't remember. Yeah, um, yeah. so I'm going to try different colors, variations, yellows and um, yeah, blues, whatever, <laughs> uh, to <coughs> get that effect with, with um, roses. And we've got, we've got sunflowers. Yep, Prismacolor sunflower and a marker pen sunflower. Quite different. And, what else? and then we've got over the back, got pumpkins and citrus fruits. So I haven't started doing anything on those yet, but um, I know there's plenty of tutorials. And there's things in books too that I've got how to colour. And these are just some exercises that I've done over a period of time that I want to try out and get around to it um, in, the, in this particular book. But no, it's, it's a wonderful book. I've, I, it's not everybody's cup of tea, I know, to do that. Um, some people just like to just, just colour in. Some of my friends think I'm mad, though. Why don't you just colour the books and be done with it? Well, yeah. <laughs> the other... When, before I got that that particular book, I had this folder for my swatches, swatch charts, and this is a list of um, the pencils and the brush markers and the water-based markers and all the things. So I've made a list of what I've got, so I know where I am. And then I've got on loose pages. I've got these. This is my art studio. That's a big intensity. I've printed these off from Tammy Ann Creative. Um, as website she, she does these swatch charts which are really good uh, that's the black widow that's the whole set of the black widow up there and then I've got the black widow different boxes go on chameleon uh, Karen Dash over there good Dermot oh <laughs> swatch it around Dermot Studio doing intense what do we got? Faber Castell, Faber Castell watercolour, the Faber Castell pastel, marker, a whole set on one page, which I've, somebody had um, printed on a swatch chart on somebody's website. Prismacolor, Spectrum Noir, metallic pencils. Okay, these are just metallic pencils of different brands. These are my gel pens, different brands of gel pens I've got. Then I've got Wax crayons, Bambino and Scholar Twist, which are Aldi's. These are Duant Pastel Pencils, where are we? Duant Pastel Pencils, um, Faber-Castell Soft Pastels, and Texture Oil Pastels. I've got Kayser Colour Brush Markers, water-based felt tip markers, or brush markers of various brands, Sharpie Alcohol Markers, other alcohol, these actually, that colour, Innovations Mail Order Catalogue, that's their brand of pen. These ones are Aldi, Creative Pastel Markers. <sighs> what a venture. Now, yeah, some other various brands I've got. Um, Fox Collection did a watercolours of collection of frosted colours. Oh, it's a bit hard to sound a lot. I should pull them out of the plastic, but I can't be bothered. Sorry about that. Um, I bought a set of Derwent Metallic Paint Set, which I'm not terribly wrapped in. Um, Tule Art Glitter Paint Pens, which are absolutely appalling. I used them once and they they either leaked or dried up. And I actually put in a complaint to Amazon and got a, a reply back from Tule saying, do you want a replacement set or do you want your money back? <laughs> I'm still trying to make up my mind. Uh, unbranded Sparkle Watercolours, El Cheapo stuff. Yeah, what have we got here? Oh, got watercolour paints and colours. This is before I started colouring in. I was doing mucking around with watercolour and um, acrylic paints and oil paints. So you've got Montmartre, Koh-i-Noor, Pelican watercolour palettes, tubes of watercolour, Montmartre and Sakura. Oops, uh, and then calligraphy. I used to do a bit of, used to do a bit of calligraphy. Oh, that, I don't use those pencils anymore so they can be thrown out. Yeah, so there you have it. There are my swatch charts, two of. 
Now I've still got a fair bit of time left on this video so I thought I might as well show you what I'm doing with Colourfully Optimistic channel. She runs a, a monthly challenge. She calls it the Alphabet Challenge and it's she said do a different use <laughs> I'm gonna say it. a different media a different brand of pencil each month and she's that way you work your way through the pencils or markers or whatever and the ones that you might not use very often you're gonna have to use because it's that month so there was A, B, C and so on I think it started August last year I think August or September and just by chance I had to have I had this book in my position this alphabet book book of letters and I hadn't coloured anything in because as much as I love looking at it, I just didn't have a clue which colours, which media to use, what colours to use and so on. But uh, ah, here is a challenge, an extra challenge to me. Not only will I use a different media, but I'm going to use, do my alphabet book. So the first one was actually using Do and Academy, but because it was so pale, <laughs> I went over them with something else <laughs> to cut to fill them in. So it's not truly A for Academy. Next one, B for Black Widow, um, Black Widow pencils, I did the B, that came out okay. The C I did with Chameleon. Um, this, it looks a bit wishy-washy, doesn't it? I didn't really know where to go with the colours on this, let me see what's on the front of the book. C, it didn't have a, it has, doesn't really have any examples on this book. You, you have to do your own thing. Anyway, what I, what I need to do is put some background, I've, I've tried to do some light pastel background but I think a darker pastel background in there would really lift that. <laughs> I've done the other, uh, gone to the other extreme here. I use uh, E what I've done. Now if you're looking for D, there's no D, stupid me, I gave it, pulled it out and tore it out and gave it to someone ages ago. So so this one I use Spectrum Noir, Spectrum Noir pencils and then I did a watercolour background which is Again, a bit of a mess. Oh, well. F is Faber-Castell Polychromis pencils. And again, I did a watercolour background. I'd like to do some more, a um, bit of shading around that, just to sort of bring it into focus a little bit. G, this is the best one I'm really pleased with. G, um, I use glitter paint pens. So I was very happy with that too. Again, I might do a background. So H, which is this month, I think. I'm going to use um, my gel pens because I've got a brand called Henley. So it'll be Henley gel pens. So that's, um, I don't know, that's about all. Will I, will I keep going or not? Let me just have a look at what else I've got. Okay, I'll show you some of my more recent colouring books that I've bought. Some of them have already been on other websites or uh, YouTubers, but that's okay. You might not have seen them. I love as soon as I saw this on somebody else's site, I had to have it. Saw so, the 50s, memories of the 1950s, dazzling diners. I just love it. You can have a look. Have a look at this. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I should bring this down a bit closer. I don't know how to do that. So look. That's a bit better. Out of the way, there we go. Oh, those out of the way. Can you see that all right? Mm. Oh, no, I'm not going to try to bring them up a bit. Use my writing board. I didn't think of that before. Okay, I'll do a flip through for you. I don't think I need to say much. It speaks for itself, doesn't it? Anybody born in the, oh, the 1940s and before <laughs> would remember this. Those are the days, weren't they? After the Second World War, for the rest of the world that have wars that have come after that. Such a happy days. Innocent days. 
where people went to work, went to school, came home, relaxed with their family, went to bed, woke up the next day, went back to work and school. Not worrying about bloody bombs and wars and floods and catastrophes. Anyway, enough of that. I haven't cut anything in this book yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I don't know where I'll start because they all look like such fun. Let's just look at my camera. At the, uh, I wasn't fully charged, so... Not much more time I've got. Anyway, I'll we'll take a gamble. that one. Then I've got another Creative Haven one. Victorian gowns. Again, I think I think I saw this. Maybe I just saw it on the internet. I can't remember. But I just love Crinlan ladies and Victorian gowns. One day I'll do a video of my swap cards. Um, oops, yeah, get that light. <laughs> this light is pretty bright and it's not really shining very much on it. Anyway, yeah, my swap cards. Um, which I have a lot of crinoline lady swap cards. Dark, isn't it? Oh, it should be okay. So pretty. Those are the days when women were women. No jeans with holes in the knees, no thongs, no t-shirts. Just beautiful dresses. On the other hand, I don't know how the hell I went to the toilet in those dresses. <laughs> Mine boggles. <laughs> so pretty. You know, you get all these books and you're dying to colour them in. <laughs> and then I spent six, <laughs> a month, <laughs> two months or so, working on my swatch book. Never mind, that's done now, so I'm <laughs> going to start colouring in, eventually. Lots to get me going, it'll take me years. That's alright. I'm not tired. What else can I do? I didn't do that, that's printed one. Yeah, so I've still got a bit of battery left in the camera, so I might show you my third book. This isn't a creative haven, this is a one, again, I just saw on Amazon, Russian dolls. Um, I just love these, um, those Russian dolls, the ones that fit inside each other, they're so cute. Interesting, it's got that black background, I suppose, that stops um, colour seeping through if you're using Sharpies or something, marker pens or something, does it? I don't know. Every time I look at these, I think of the Ukraine. Look at those poor people over there. I was watching a video, I, sh I shouldn't watch them on YouTube. I mean, I started watching YouTube to watch colorists and artists and stuff, but then on the feed kept on coming up with these damn videos of the Ukraine war and people fleeing the country with their pets, you know, holding cats and cats in cages and dogs on leads and little dogs in their arms and one guy even had a big bird cage with a, cock, uh, a cockatoo or parrot in it, you know, to try. And I think, how awful that you have to leave your home and take your animals with you to another country, not knowing what it's going to be like, where you're going to go to. And the animals just look terrified. And my cat doesn't like being picked up at all. And I just can't imagine if I had to take my animal, my cat somewhere. I don't know, I, I don't know how I'd do it. I think I'd just have to stay home. I wouldn't abandon them. There's no way I'd abandon them. I think um, I'd stay home and take my chances, I think. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. Anyway, change the subject. Sorry about that. I just get upset when I see it. As we all do, I suppose. <sighs> Sorry. 
But these are such pretty drawings, aren't they? It's beautiful. Yeah. Oh. Well, in the end of this book, they've got a little um, colour chart sheet. That's neat, isn't it? It's good when they do that in, um, in the colouring books themselves. Instead of having to go to my swatch book, I can, uh, you know, play around here with colours I'm going to use on, on various pages. Okay, well the battery is nearly flat and I've done whew, 20 minutes. I think that's enough to put on YouTube for now. The next time I'll either show you some of more of my colouring book, new colouring books or some of the ones I've actually coloured in. Bye for now and stay safe.